But when we start in England, there was a massive game, of course, on Saturday uh, late afternoon between mm. Manchester City and Chelsea at the Etihad. Yeah. They finished 1-1 done. Yeah. I think a lot of us expected City to kind of cruise through victory considering 100%. their form, 10 wins in a row, and yeah. Chelsea kind of patchy season, let's call it that way. What happened? Well, my prediction was horrendous. That's what happened. I <laughs> predicted City to win by more than three. Oh, wow. I honestly thought, after seeing Chelsea quite a few times this season, they were horrendous against Liverpool. They picked up in the cup. But I didn't see that performance yeah. from Chelsea. I thought the tactics from Pochettino, to be fair, was quite good. Palmer mm. high on the right, Sterling high on the left, trying to push their fullbacks deep. But City didn't play. Chelsea, I thought, were great in terms yeah. of their tactics, how they approached the game, loads of energy. And I think after the game, Pep was furious. I don't think it depends and the shout. I think it was more how his team played. And um, give Chelsea a little bit of credit, even though I thought City was so much better second half. They yeah. could have won five or six second half. Yeah, and we would talk about Haaland missing some chances, which is very unlike him, but there's two big headers that, that yeah. he missed. I agree with you on the Chelsea. For me, it was maybe the best performance because it kind of lasted longer than yeah. usual. Usually they have 10 good minutes or 20 or maybe yeah. 30, maybe just one half. This time it felt like the first half was really good. The second half, they kind of... Defensive. Yeah, they protected their lead, which yeah. you have to do that, I guess, at the Etihad. Uh, but I thought City moved the ball quite slowly. Yeah not so much vertically. And I thought it was interesting to hear Rodri after the game saying we were scared to play through the middle and expose ourselves to their counter-attack. So we kind of played, Yeah, why? Because, you know, Doku was pretty ineffective on one side against yeah. uh, Malogusto. Yeah. Sometimes, Jules, when you're playing those sort of games, sometimes when you see Pochettino and you see the opposition, you see the lineups come in and you flip chart, and you see the individuals, you've got a fair idea where they're going to play. But sometimes, mm. not second guessing, because Pep knows everything about any individual and any team, and formations, but it does take you as a player sometimes 5, 10, 15 minutes to try and problem solve. Yeah. So you might see the opposition come in, you might think they're playing a certain system, and all of a sudden you're quite surprised how high Palmer and Sterling were in the energy of Conor Gallagher. So that's something you figure out on the pitch. It can take you a little bit of time to get into your stride and then to get flowing and play again, and like I said, problem solve. But it took them longer than normal. Mm. Normally a pep team, they'll see yeah. something different and they'll adjust and they'll find a way early on. The players on the pitch are intelligent. Rodri's super intelligent, isn't yeah. he? The way he problem solves and he, and he can find gaps and, and, and plug holes himself. So maybe they just completely got took by surprise and it took them longer. And it took them for 45 to actually adjust. So half time you felt as though Man City, you don't say it often, actually needed a team talk. Yeah. They needed instructions from the manager. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it seems like defensively, the, the defensive record is not too bad yeah. uh, compared to what, where Liverpool and Arsenal are, for example, if yeah. you compare, or even I think where they were last season. It still seems to me that it's actually quite easy to create chances and they don't... Uh, Against them. To, Yeah, I yeah. think Edison has the worst saving ratio in the whole of the big five leagues. It's never leagues. been a secret though, 55 is it? 55% or something like but that. It's never so. been a secret how to play against Man City. No, true. It's just how you do it. Yeah, and but usually they control the spaces really well when they don't have the ball. Yeah. So whether it's a high line or not so much high line, they, they can control where the ball goes or yeah. before the, goal, the, the ball, the, the pass is made. They, but I thought on Saturday, they didn't control spaces at all. It was no. easy for Gusto on the right-hand side and Palmer. Yeah. Like Jackson had space. If, you, if, you, space. if, you, if you're brave enough when you play against Man City, it's a little bit like Liverpool when you play against Liverpool, more so last year at Liverpool, where if you're brave enough to try and set traps for Man City, it's really it's easy sitting there, but when you're on the pitch and you're ground level to try and do it, it's really hard. But you've got to have really energetic players. Yeah. And then as soon as either Man City give the ball away or you win the ball back, the ball is then over the top. It's down the sides because the fullbacks play high up the yeah. pitch. So you can try and expose. You've seen that in the Champions yeah, League. Yeah. You can try and expose them if you're brave enough and if you're good enough. Not many teams can do it. But yeah. when you get it right, you can try and get some chances. As I said, it's not easy to try and implement that idea. It's easy to have it because City dominate the ball. And as you said, they create overloads left through the middle either on the right side as well. So I think from a Chelsea point of view, it gives the fans a little bit of hope. If they can keep playing like that, Definitely. they've got a chance yeah. in future games because there's been some games this season where they've looked a shambles. Yeah, the Cup completely. games, the Villa game especially, I thought I mean, they looked the, great yeah. in the FA Cup. But Other then the games, first half against Palace. Liverpool. Which, yeah, but at least, at least Villa was after that. Yeah. But after Villa, to go to Chris Palace and have the first half that they had, which was shambolic, was Awful. weird. What about Erling Haaland then? because he should have scored at least two, those yeah. two headers. Yeah. There may be a third one that Petrovic saved, that yeah. is slightly deflected. There's one where he's not on his toes, not aware. The easiest the chance was the one, do you remember, I think it was late on in the game when the ball got whipped in and he went for a power header. Yeah. It should have been a glancing header. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the Bruin cross. Yeah, what I would say is never write him off. 
what he is a player at the minute is a player that's just a bit rusty. I think yeah. you see that when the camera panned on him towards the end of the game and he was just sort of staring into thin air and he's, st he's staring into thin air thinking, how have I missed those chances yeah. today? I'm better than that. It's a man that's come back from injury. He's a little bit rusty. He's a little bit snatchy. You can tell he's snatchy in his finishes because he's adding power. Yeah. Because normally when you're confident, you might you know flick a little header into the corner or take an extra touch and make sure you're accurate. When you're not super confident, he is in his own mentality yeah, yeah, and the way yeah. he approaches the games. So when you miss chances, it does hurt you a little bit. You start to add more power. So you can never criticise him because you know next game against Brentford, he'll yeah. probably wrap in three or four. Yeah. But you saw the player at the weekend that was just a little bit snatchy. He's desperate.